All the places we go, 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 go. Wonderful Christmas and New Year. Happy New Year! It's 2015! Today, on this beautiful January day, we are going to start a new series with me, Misty the Travel Muse, and you, fellow travelers. We're going to start a series about cultures and customs because last time we talked about how to ways to travel sustainably, and as I mentioned, one really important way of doing that is just knowing where you're going and how to interact with the people there, how to uh, be polite, how to be respectful, to honor the traditions and cultures that each country has. Um, and then the next series we'll get into a little bit more deeper on the eco-friendly terms, but today we're gonna start with the cultures and custom series. So we're gonna start with Japan. So Japan is a really respectful country. I'm sure you've seen this or you've heard about this through your travels, through other people's travels, through the internet, but they put a lot of emphasis on respect and it's one of my favorite reasons, uh, the, I love the culture because I think it's a really important thing to R-E-S-P-E-C-T, find out what it means to Japan. Ways to be respectful in Japan. Number one, don't wear shoes on anything that has carpet. Uh, when you go into someone's home, when you go into a dressing room, even at a department store, they're going to ask you to take off your shoes. You're going to see shoes everywhere. You're going to see cats everywhere too. Like I said, you're going to see shoes being taken off and the reason that this is is they don't want you bringing the dirt in from the day, it's symbolic of, of leaving that behind. Um, this is also true for temples, when you visit one of the temples or shrines, be mindful of this, it's a very, very important thing for them. One thing to really keep in mind is that everything we do in America basically is the opposite in Japan. They consider it highly rude to hold a door for them, it's not, not that they, you know, don't appreciate it in some sense, but no, they just think it's rude. Basically because it A, insinuates that they can't do it on their own, and B, it's stopping the flow of traffic. If you've ever been to Tokyo, ever seen pictures of Tokyo, it's like people, people, boom, ba -da boom, ba -da boom, 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 boom. They're everywhere, and they really want to keep the flow of traffic going. And if you're the one stopping it, they're not going to like outright punch you in the face, but they're going to give you some shade. They're going to be like, mm, really, you holding the door for me? Okay, whatever. The same thing goes with when you're wa- this should just go for the world, let's be honest, but over here we're a little bit more flexible, but the same thing goes with when you're standing in front of a door, oh my god, that's the rudest thing. If you're standing in front of any sort of establishment, really be mindful of the fact that you are stopping in front of something, you're blocking the traffic, and again, they're very much about order and, and this flow, so if you're blocking the flow, Someone's gonna pull you aside likely and make sure that you're not standing right in front of the door to the shop or the subway or whatever. Another tip for when you're on the subway is please be mindful of people's space. Now this may seem a little counterintuitive if you're on one of the major subway lines because everybody's packed in, it's super crowded, but that being said, still try to be mindful. Um, if you sit down and somebody moves, don't be offended. It's all about their personal space and they're still a little uncomfortable with um, foreigners and they don't necessarily want to sit next to you but it's not about you so just let them be or you know just just let them move it's not a big deal one thing that you'll notice is that japanese are very apologetic people they they apologize and the reason behind that is because it's a, it's actually a symbol of strength to show humility vulnerability and weakness so in in japan you apologize things for things that you can't do like Oh, I'm so sorry, I can't, you know, I can't make it tonight, or I can't, whatever, I can't, I can't walk on one hand, I just can't. Um, but just be mindful that that's actually a very appropriate thing to do, to constantly be, you know, apologizing and bowing your head and being very, very respectful. So remember how earlier I said the thing about the shoes? Another really important thing is that if you stay at a Japanese person's home, they're going to ask you to take a bath. Yeah. You know, you may stink, and that may be part of it, but likely it's because it's a very important thing for them, going back to the bringing the day inside of their home. Uh, and they also go to great lengths to give you this really wonderful luxury shower experience. So, um, and the Japanese bidets are amazing. You're like, Whoa! 
Just so, uh, yeah, yeah, I just, just let the bidet flow. So they're gonna ask you to take a bath and be accepting of it, be joyful because it's a really wonderful thing to wash yourself off, to leave the day outside, and it's considered rude to like lie in their bed and sit on their furniture if you haven't already showered and you haven't taken a bath. If you're also potted, don't talk about your partner, don't brag, it's considered so rude. Um, and one thing that you can do is if you do talk about your partner, talk about them in a way that makes it sound like, oh, my partner, he's so crazy, he, he bit, you know, my ear when we first met and I had to go to the hospital, but it's okay because now we're together. So if you are going to talk about your partner, give a little funny anecdote, something that includes humility again because it's very important for them uh, and it's, it's rude to brag for them, so just don't. Some last tidbits, um, when you're eating your food, do not grab, first of all, it's okay if you want to use a fork, they'll understand, but if you're using chopsticks and you're eating out of a community bowl or plate, do not grab any food with the ends of the chopsticks that have been in your mouth, only take it from the back end. Um, again, if you don't feel comfortable enough to use chopsticks, just use a fork, but be mindful that that's really gross for them. Also, don't ever stick your chopsticks up. Whenever you're not using them, let them rest on your plate or on a little chopstick holder, but never just like sticking up like, yo, I'm a chopstick, what up? A few other things, don't shake someone's hand, and Japanese are also very shy about looking you in the eyes. Um, if you ask for directions, don't be offended if they don't help you. Sometimes they don't feel comfortable enough with their English. So, and it's also always a good thing to try to know basic phrases, if more than basic phrases when you go to a, com a country so that you have some way to get by and you're not forcing somebody out of their comfort zone to speak a language that they don't necessarily speak. I hope that some of that, if not all of it, was informative for you and that if you have any plans to visit Japan in the near future or distant future that you take some of those tips with you and that you use them in a meaningful and wise way. Because again, being appropriate and being mindful of someone's culture is a really great way to make an impact. Oh yeah, I just said all of that in one breath, you guys. Woo! Anyway, until next time, uh, keep inspiring and traveling and loving and yes, all of those things. Uh, and comment, let me know what you guys think. I don't feel like anybody's talking to me and I'm just kind of talking to myself, which whatever, I'm gonna keep doing, but I would love to hear from you. I would love to know something that you wanna know about, questions that you have about travel, about traveling sustainably, about eco-travel, about you know places that, that maybe people don't know about. I would love to be uh, one of your sources for that kind of information. So again, until next time, keep inspiring. This has been another episode of Misty the Travel Muse. Misty the Travel Muse.